Coming up in today's show, stocks fall to finish the mixed week, an update on the Middle East conflict, Jamie Dimon says this is the most dangerous time for the world, oil jumps almost 6%, consumer sediment falls, and a look at big bank earnings. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Click Capital Daily Market Show. On this Friday to finish out the week, and we got a bit of a change in things today, with tech actually leading the way down, with semis the weakest, and pretty much all mega cap tech coming off a bit. Did get a bounce back in those consumer staples that have been hit hard of late, and crude oil ripped higher today, which helped propel energy stocks high. We saw a bit of a bounce in utilities as well. So stick with me. I'll get into all of that on the charts a bit later on. But first, I'll get you up to date with everything that's happening out there. So just a bit of an update with what's happening with the israel Hamas war is Israel's looking set to go into the Gaza Strip and take full control. They've already issued warnings to civilians to evacuate, and it could be turning into a bit of a humanitarian mess over there the United Nations trying to help establish a humanitarian corridor to allow supplies in and innocents to get out as Israel is set on taking full control of the Gaza Strip and dropping the hammer on Hamas once and for all. And so the real wild card in all of this is if the other Islamic resistance group backed by Iran, Hezbollah, operating out of Lebanon on Israel's northern border, and they're much more bigger and powerful than Hamas. Some say they have the biggest non-state military group in the world, with tens of thousands of rockets that can hit anywhere in Israel. And if Hezbollah were to get involved in this, that would be a big game changer. And since we're already starting to see a little bit of fighting come out of Hezbollah and from other Palestinians in the West Bank, that could be why we're seeing oil shooting up a bit here today, as the market might be starting to get worried about that real possibility. And we've even got Russians, Putin, issuing warnings against an Israeli ground invasion of Gaza. Gaza and appearing to try and play the role as a peacekeeper but who knows what he really wants as he's trying to get closer with Iran and so hopefully Israel doesn't become the grounds for another proxy war between the West and Russia and Iran joining in as well. That's why we've got one of Wall Street's most prominent figures, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon, saying now is the most dangerous time for the world in decades. And he lists numerous risks like geopolitical tensions, wars, soaring debt, and the Fed. He said, while we hope for the best, we prepare the firm for a broad range of outcomes so we can consistently deliver for clients no matter the environment. And so this is still very much a fluid situation. And we can see that in the crude oil futures market today, with prices surging almost 6% as it looks like Israel troops may go into the Gaza Strip this weekend and who knows that may prompt Hezbollah to start ramping up their attacks on, on northern Israel if they think the Israel defense force is spread thin down towards the south near the Gaza Strip. And if we were to see Hezbollah ramp things up, I think we would wake up Monday morning to a huge gap up in the oil market, potentially above $100 a barrel, which could be very upsetting for financial markets worldwide. We can see that in the price action of crude oil futures today. Big reversal candle jumped back up above its 50-day VWAP, almost getting up to $88 a barrel here. And like I said, if this conflict were to escalate, We'll be back to yearly highs in no time above 95 a barrel. And normally with geopolitical events like this, much of the market will rush to treasuries as the flight to safety. However, we all know bonds have been getting smashed of late with ripping yields, especially in long duration bonds. And that could be helping to make the shiny asset of gold a lot more appealing as one of the very few places to seek refuge in a time of escalating conflict. And that's why we saw gold rip higher as well today. And that could also be the market pricing in a potential spilling over in the Middle East over the weekend into next week. And so even though we've got the dollar holding firm there at 106.40, look at that huge rip in gold today on volume as well, finishing the week at 19.41 an ounce here. And like I've been saying for a few days, ever since we hit the short-term bottom, I think gold's got the potential to really develop some legs here. And who knows, over the next week or two, we could hit all-time highs above 2100 an ounce. Especially if the yields and the dollar came off, all the ingredients are there for gold to go on a strong run here. We had the Michigan Consumer Sediment Survey come in today, a lot lower than expectations, showing the lowest reading in months, dropping to 63 from 68 last month, with consumer inflation expectations jumping to the highest level since May. And that'll be on the back of the price we're all paying for gas, in addition to food as well, not to mention the jumps in things like shelter and insurance. However, this is a time when the stock market normally makes a bottom 
and we move into that bullish seasonality. And with analysts expecting Q3 earnings to come in around break even before they go back to growth in Q4, the bulls are saying we could see stocks rally into the last stretch of the year. Also pointing to the Fed being likely done with interest rates. They're betting on that soft landing scenario, along with inflation continuing to move down overall. However, I'd say for that to really hold some ground, we'd need to see the price of oil come back. And we've yet to see the full effect of the Fed's hiking cycle play out throughout the economy because we've already got bankruptcies on the rise. As we come out of that extended period of rock bottom rates, then all of a sudden we're back above 5%. That's bound to have caused a lot of issues with companies that rely on debt with thin margins. And that's why looking at large companies, corporates, we've already seen 516 file for bankruptcy year to date. And that's already more than all of 2021 and 2022. And that's not usually a sign of a hot and growing economy. And another billionaire who understands the consumer really well, Marcus Lemonis, said the consumer is really fragile right now. And he's the CEO and chairman of Camping World, whose stock has been pretty weak of late. And just taking him out to a weekly chart, actually hitting the lowest price it's seen in over a couple of years. However, it could look to be getting a bit undervalued here as well. We've got Q3 earnings season kicking off today with the big banks coming out JP Morgan, Wells and City, all beating expectations, but all pointing to some softness in the economy, some worrying signs, higher rates hurting them and their consumers, more loans going bad. And so they did come in with good numbers, but that third quarter profit was driven primarily by continued rise in interest income, and that allows them to raise the rates they charge on loans faster than they increase their payouts on deposits. There's a look at the daily price action in JP Morgan. You can see they beat earnings expectations by almost 10%. Stock ripped up early morning, getting up over 5%, have a big reversal in the afternoon to finish up just 1.5% higher. Similar price action and Wells coming off a lower base that finished up over 3%. And just looking at Citigroup, they actually came in with a big beat, 32% in EPS. Market gapped up, however, it finished a little bit lower for the day. And there's a look at the financial sector fund ETF XLF, pretty muted for the day as well, just finished slightly higher. And actually regional banks was one of the weakest sectors for the day, down almost 2%. But we'll get a lot of those regionals reporting next week. And just looking out to next week, we've got Charles Schwab reporting on Monday, going into Tuesday with Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson, Goldman Sachs and a few others, along with some retail data, then starting to get into the thick of it with earnings on Wednesday with the big ones Tesla, Netflix, along with some housing data, going into Thursday, more financials reporting, along with weekly jobless claims. We'll get to hear from Jay Powell, and then we'll be finishing out the week with earnings from American Express and a few others as well. And just looking at that economic data we've had, we can see China's PPI contracting 2.5% year over year. Their inflation rate sitting right at zero year over year, still on the cusp of deflation and their imports down 6.2% year over year, and another sign of weakness in their economy. Inflation data in France came in as expected, 4.9% year over year. Then there wasn't much else out to finish the week. Fed fund futures slightly pulled back the probabilities the Fed will hike in December and January to around 27%. The fear and greed index is still stuck in the fear zone, and corporate insiders still sitting on the sidelines in this market. And it was a busy day in options to finish out the week coming in just under 44 million contracts, traded 51% of them calls. And so just looking at the S&P 500, we pulled back a little bit as expected, finishing at 43.27, close to that max pain level of 4,300 for option dealers. Dow Jones was a standout, actually finishing the day a little higher, thanks to those banks. And it was the NASDAQ that led the way lower, finishing down more than 1.2%, and further weakness in small caps, the Russell coming back down to lows, and micro caps closing at the lowest price in years as well. Similar price action in international stock indices. They finished the week on a soft note and lower turning back down after they too all had a bit of a bounce. And with that move up in crude and gold, option dealers took notice as well. Bucking the usual trend on Fridays of a VIX crush, we actually got quite the pop in the VIX today, getting up to almost 21, the highest level we've seen in months. With the VIX one day actually closing almost at 21 and higher than the VIX 9 day for a little bit of backwardation there and the rest of the VIX curve pretty flat as well. So the market's starting to get a bit more nervous here and we can see that in the volatility risk premium now at 6.2 points above realized and the skew index jumping a bit to 144. That's the price of out of the money put options and with breadth turning back down 
and continued weakness as we can see in the amount of stocks making new lows versus new highs. Big turn down in the growth defensive sector spread and high beta stocks versus low volatility as well turning down and the copper versus gold spread breaking down to multi-month lows. Gold versus stocks putting in a nice bottom jumping up and gold versus treasuries finding all-time highs. Continued weakness and credit spreads, high yield bonds versus treasuries, inflation expectations still holding up and a little bit of a pullback in yields today. The two-year at 505 and the 10-year at 461, which didn't seem to help stocks and a little bit of a bounce in TLT from that, although high yield bonds still a little soft. Crypto is still trading sideways as well and bounce back up in DBC, commodity index ETF back above its 50. Silver joining in on the action with gold as well and looking at stock sectors, got a little bit of a bounce in the cannabis ETF, a lot of weakness in tech with semis leading the way down 2.5%. Airline companies finding new multi-month lows and there's those bounce back up in energy, oil and gas stocks. The winning sector today, gold miners, defense stocks still holding up there and defensive sectors, healthcare, staples, and utilities all finishing the day higher. Also got earnings out of BlackRock today and they beat expectations as well. However, the market still marked them down trading at multi-month lows. And the big guys, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Nvidia, and Tesla all came off today pretty good. Mostly weakness across the meme space. The IPO Birkenstock falling again. The defense contractors holding up pretty good here. Some of them still breaking out. Israel stocks falling again. And a bit of a bounce back in those snack makers, Kraft, Pepsi, Walmart, and Mondelez. It's next era energy moving up again. And now got General Motors trading at multi-month lows. Bit of a pullback in Walgreens after yesterday's earnings and others 3M and Sphere. Still trading a little soft. Did get a bit of a dip buy off that support zone and the telecoms as well looking a little heavy. And regional banks didn't seem to like the price action and the big banks that reported today. They all coming off a little bit here. And we've still got Bank of America next week along with Charles Schwab as well. Okay, to sum it up for the week, there's a look at the weekly candle at the S&P 500. So last week was that hammer candle and we bounced off that trend line. Then we've gone straight into to this kind of inverted hammer candle. So the market's really not sure here. And like I've shown you, there's a lot of weakness and breadth out there. The S&P 500 equal weight looks like it's in a strong short-term downtrend. Same with the Russell as well, in a strong short-term downtrend, closing at the lowest price in months. And just taking you out to a weekly chart on the Russell, you can see it's moving back down into that big support zone. And micro caps have actually lost their support and trading down to new lows here. And so even though we've had a bit of a pullback in yields this week and today, it looks like the market's focused could be starting to shift a bit to what's going on in the Middle East and we can see that in the price action of crude ripping up higher today and gold as well having its best day in a long time and the VIX as well getting a bit of a pop looking like it's waking up and so I'd say the market's just waiting to see what happens after Israel goes into the Gaza Strip and whether things flare up in the West Bank or coming out of Lebanon with Hezbollah as well? Because if we see crude oil futures rip, that's likely going to cause a sell-off in the stock market. So as always, we'll keep an eye on what's going on over there. And for the sake of innocent civilians, hopefully it doesn't spill over. However, that is a real risk for the markets here. Otherwise, stocks will keep looking towards the earnings we get out and the outlooks we get from the CEOs. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching the Click Capital Daily Market Show. Hope you have a relaxing weekend and I'll see you again Monday afternoon. Cheers.